Lucille Ball was considered to be one of the leading ladies of comedy and a great American icon, which is why on July 27, 2008, we decided to stop at her museum and grave site in Jamestown, New York to pay our respects. It wasn't until later that we found out some interesting information. In 1919, Lucille Desiree Ball was born to her parents, Henry Darrell Ball and Desiree Dee Dee Evelyn Hunt in Jamestown, New York. Her family lived in Wyandotte, Michigan for some time. But when she was three years old, her 27-year-old father died of typhoid fever. She and her family was then forced to move in to nearby Celeron and live with her grandparents. Lucille Ball's road to comedic success was long and bumpy, and almost kind of a fluke in many ways. In 1925, Ball, then only 14 years old, started dating a guy named Johnny DeVita. Now, he was a 21-year-old hoodlum. Dee Dee was unhappy with the relationship, but was unable to influence her daughter to end it. She expected the romance to burn out in just a few weeks, but that did not happen. After about a year, Dee Dee tried to separate them by using Lucille's desire to be in show business. Despite the family's meager finances, she arranged for Lucille to go to the John Murray Anderson School for Dramatic Arts in New York City. Now, this was the same place where Betty Davis was a fellow student. Lucy later spoke about that time in her life when she said, All I learned in drama school was how to be afraid. Ball's instructors felt that she would not be successful in the entertainment business and were not afraid to say this in front of her a criticism which Ball did not enjoy hearing. Throughout her career, Lucy was always determined to prove her teachers wrong and returned to New York in 1928. Among her other jobs, she landed work as a fashion model. Her career was thriving when she became ill with rheumatoid arthritis and was not able to work for two years. She moved back to New York in 1932 to resume her pursuit of a career as an actress and supported herself by again working as the Chesterfield Cigarette Girl. Ball moved permanently to Hollywood to appear in films. She appeared in many small movie roles in the 1930s as a contract player for RKO Radio Pictures. Ball even auditioned for the role of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, but Vivian Lee got the part, winning the Academy Award for Best Actress for her role. Ball went on and signed with MGM in the 1940s, but never achieved major stardom for her appearance in the studio's films. Not knowing what kind of talent they had in Lucille Ball, she was known in many Hollywood circles as the Queen of the Bees. In 1948, Ball was cast as Liz Cougar later Cooper, a wacky wife in My Favorite Husband, a radio program for CBS Radio. The program was so successful that CBS asked her to develop it for television. She agreed, but insisted on working with her real-life husband, Cuban band leader Desi Arnaz. CBS executives were reluctant, thinking the public would not accept an all-American redhead and a Cuban as a couple. CBS was initially not impressed with the pilot episode produced by the couple's Desilu Productions company, so the couple toured the road in a vaudeville act with Lucy as the zany housewife wanting to get in Arnez's show. The tour was a great success, and CBS put I Love Lucy into their lineup. The rest became Hollywood legend and history. Desi Lu Productions was not only producers of great shows for TV, such as all of the Lucy shows, Star Trek, and Mission Impossible, but they were also pioneers when it came to television production and technology. One example is the process of filming the shows in front of a live studio audience so that they could stay in their LA home and not have to relocate to the larger markets on the East Coast. This allowed Ball and Arnez to keep their L.A. mansion located at 1000 North Roxbury Drive in Beverly Hills, California, that they purchased in 1954. Although she had other homes, Lucy loved this place so much that she kept it and lived there until her death 35 years later, which is rare for Hollywood celebrities. The mansion was close to the studio, yet she could 
also be secluded and spend time with her family. Even after her divorce to Desi in the 60s, Lucy was determined to keep her home. They even shot some of the scenes for I Love Lucy in the backyard. It was on April 18, 1989, when Lucy was at this home when she started complaining of chest pains. An ambulance was called and she was rushed to the emergency room at Cedar Sinai Medical Center. She was diagnosed with a dissecting aortic aneurysm and underwent heart surgery for nearly eight hours, including the transplant of a new aorta. The surgery appeared to be successful and Ball began recovering very quickly, even walking around her room with little assistance. She received a flurry of get well wishes from Hollywood and across the street from Cedar sinai Medical Center, the Hard Rock Cafe erected a sign reading, Hard Rock Loves Lucy. However, shortly after dawn on April 26, Ball awoke with severe pains and soon lost consciousness. Attempts to revive her proved unsuccessful and she died at 5.47 a.m. Doctors determined that she had succumbed to a second aortic rupture, this time in the abdomen area, and that was not directly related to her surgery the previous week. For thousands of fans, it's like losing a member of the family. Lucille Ball died today after suffering cardiac arrest. Doctors at Cedar sinai Hospital had thought Ms. Ball was improving after last week's open-heart surgery. Her death was totally unexpected. Husband Gary Morton and children Lucy Arnaz and Desi Arnaz Jr. are said to be in deep shock. When Lucille Ball died, she was immediately taken from the hospital and cremated. In fact, she had stated in her will that she did not want to be embalmed. She had a small memorial service and she had stated many times that she did not want her death, funeral, and burial to be a public spectacle like Marilyn Monroe's. Lucy's ashes were interred next to her mother Dee Dee's in one of the Forest Lawn cemeteries in Los Angeles, Hollywood area. There was a simple plaque posted, Morton, Lucille Ball, 1911 to 1989. The ashes were later moved, both Dee Dee's and Lucy's, to the family plot in Jamestown, New York in 2002. This is where they will remain forever. Her cemetery is now a tourist attraction, which is what Lucy would have never wanted. Although she was born here in Jamestown, her family did not live here very long. Her father died when she was three years old, and they were living in Michigan at the time. They later moved in with their paternal grandparents. The family plot where she is buried now is the maternal grandparents and her mother's family, the Hunts. Well, that is not the end of the story. We found some more information when we started to look into potential paranormal claims either at the gravesite or at the museum. It turns out there's actual paranormal claims at the mansion back in Beverly Hills. A few years after her death, her husband of 27 years, Gary Morton, sold her beloved mansion in Beverly Hills in what was considered to be a weak real estate market. The new owners got the home for a decent price, so they began to renovate the entire building. These were not minor renovations by no means. In fact, not only did they remove a large portion of the mansion completely, the entire outside has been gutted and stuccoed, which results in a multi-million dollar renovation to the building. When the renovation started, that is when the paranormal reports of Lucille Ball's spirit began. The first reported sighting occurred while a friend drove past the home. His anonymous report is that Lucille was standing inside the property looking at him through the fence. She looked frustrated, likely because at the time her home was in the process of demolition. While this was the first recorded of the occurrence, it certainly would not be the last. Ball's spectral activity is centered around the attic of the building according to the subsequent homeowners. Unidentified noises can be heard emanating from the attic. There are reports of sounds loud enough to be a party coming from upstairs. Voices are heard shouting even when the attic is empty. Boxes and furniture are routinely moved arranged differently than they were when the homeowners left them. There's even one instance of I Love Lucy's theme song drifting down into the house from the attic. There is some dissent among the reports of whether Lucille Ball has caused any damage to the home. While some say there has never been any, others claim that windows have been broken on the property with no explanation. The homeowner's belongings will disappear only to reappear in places they shouldn't have been. 
Lucy's spirit has also been reported at the old Desilu Studios. It is reported that she haunts the Hart Building at Paramount Studios. The studio was once Desilu Studios, where the I Love Lucy show was produced. Night watchmen at the studio have reported seeing her spirit in the building's upper floors. Her presence is always surrounded by the scent of flowery perfume. So why do you think the spirit of Lucille Ball has come back? Do you think she's upset because her beloved mansion has been renovated? Is it possible that moving her remains from one part of our country to another has disturbed her peaceful rest? What are your thoughts on this? Leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video and like to see more in the future, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and give us a like below. Also, if you have any comments or or suggestions for our future videos, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching this episode of Our Haunted Travels.